Welcome to Experience Michiana. I'm the show's producer, Kelsey Zumber, and we have a great show for you today. Rick and Kelly are out exploring, bringing you things that you can experience right along with us. Going to be heading to Bristol to Evan's Sidewalk Cafe, which is a great place. They serve breakfast and lunch. We'll see what Rick and Kelly get a chance to grub on there. Uh, Krista Bailey is with us this episode as well. She's going to head to Eco Owl, which is a print shop and it's part of Lang Lab. She's going to talk about the sustainability model, both the environment as well as uh, ec economics of that. And then we're headed to Bristol right now to Crossroads Change in Rural America, which is the Smithsonian exhibit, which is temporarily at the Elkhart County Historical Museum. Rick and Kelly are exploring what happened to our country as far as rural America. Well, this time of year, we, uh, we got to get out of the cold because it's just cold. And of course, <laughs> if you were a farmer back in the day, you didn't like this type of year, especially in rural America. And we're here with Patrick McGuire. And of course, Patrick is with the Elkhart County Museum and uh, is, or the Historical Museum. Yes. Yeah. And I will say this, not every day that you get the Smithsonian coming in and saying, no. we want to bring an exhibit here. No, absolutely not. Um, this is one of six spots in the state of Indiana where this exhibit is on tour. And this is all about farming. You know, I was looking at this and, it, it, you know, Kelsey even made a comment back there behind the camera and he, he's like, does it look a little familiar to you? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you get in here and you start looking at these exhibits, but not just the Smithsonian side of it, but there's a lot of Elkhart yes. County uh, yeah. you know, history on the walls as well. Yeah, part of our kind of application to get this exhibit is we wanted to incorporate some local history. So what we did is we did interviews and we call them profiles in rural life of people who have a strong tie to the history of our rural life here in Elkhart County and what they're doing now and how they've kind of lived off the land for uh, hundreds of years and their generations. You know, and it's, you know, you look at this, you, you look at the exhibits and really, I mean, phenomenal job. Yeah, it's amazing. They, yeah, they and, absolutely uh, do. What a, what a gift. But, this is one of those things when you look at the pictures, just the lifestyle, the, sure. the, the ruggedness of, of, you know, tilling the ground, getting the crops in, but then also being able to harvest. Yeah. Uh, just phenomenal. And the technology has changed this in the last hundred years. Sure. Yeah. One of my favorite parts of the exhibit is it has all those historic paintings that you see, like mm -hmm. American Gothic by Grant Wood. And then you walk down the panel a little bit and then you see images of, um, you know, African-American and Latino workers in the field and kind of the just juxtaposition of what we see in popular culture, what we've been taught and see in the history books to what life was really like. But, yeah, well, yeah. That's, they had that. They was, mm -hmm. There were issues. You know, there was a lot sure. of clashes in rural America. Oh, yeah, you know, absolutely. From the women owning farms, sure. uh, the Hispanic farm owners, the American Indian farm owners, African-American. I mean, even cousins would feud oh, yeah. over farmland. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, absolutely. The importance of land, and they talk about it here in this exhibit as well, is, and what it meant to own the land or how to use the land and what that meant, even from the native perspective to mm -hmm. it being taken away from by the early settlers, and even what it means now and the, the issues in the western part of the United States with federal ownership of land and right. how yeah. the people use it. It's, it's a really interesting kind of cross-section to learn about. It really is. Now, what are some of the other themes that are explored in this exhibit? Um, well, it explores about wealth and identity and persistence and community. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I really like is the importance that these panels talk about Main Street how it's always been important historically and now in our smaller communities, how Main Street is really kind of the center point for rural life, whether it's through festivals or, you know, now how even in our community, how these Main Streets are kind of adapting to what's happening around them. Now, when people hear rural, what, what is kind of the definition of what that is? Sure. Well, uh, technically, I think it's a population thing, but uh, I think rural, what it means is depending on who you ask, I think. Okay. Yeah, and I, it's kind of an interesting thing. You, you think about rural and you think about farmland, you think maybe a slower lifestyle, mm -hmm. uh, big expanses of land. and Back 40. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, I think, and one of the things I've been learning about through this, this exhibit and the people who've come here we've spoken to is um, it kind of means something to everybody mm -hmm. differently mm -hmm. so it's a really interesting thing to find out from our own community as well. Well and this mm -hmm. what I noticed going through here you know it's not just talking about you know 
the farming itself, but it talks about just the changes that happen. Sure. Mm -hmm. it, just in the, you know, the rural environment, you know, pre-World War II, post-World War II. I honestly think that when the economy boom happened mm -hmm. after World War II, that it actually hurt farmers because a lot of the younger folks left to go into the cities sure. and left the farms. And then what you had is a, an aging population mm -hmm. that couldn't yeah. sustain the land. So Yeah, and we still see that today. I mean, one of the reasons we wanted this exhibit, even though it talks about nationwide issues here in our community, is there's a whole lot of connections, especially like you were yeah. saying, post-war and the rise of the RV industry here in our community. And that's still going on today. Even, you know, you think about, I came here in the early, or like 2012, and that was kind of right after the economic downturn. Mm -hmm. And you see all the RV companies struggling, and now they're back up, and they're really kind of starting to move into these rural communities and well, taking over. And I see Amazon you, trucks out yes, here now. I know, yeah. with the big blue sign. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, but you know, one of the things that it covers is the past, the present, and the future. Yeah. And yeah. so that's really important. Yeah, and I think the future part is really kind of really hits hard on this exhibit. And uh, the Smithsonian and us at the museum, we think that this isn't kind of the end all be all. This, is, this exhibit and the issues it brings up is really the start of a conversation. Absolutely. That we, yeah, that we want to have with our community and talk about where we're going and how the history really informs that. How long, know, is this gonna, how long is this exhibit going to be here? It'll be here till March 16th. Okay. Yeah. You know, one of the things I wish is that it wasn't just here in the community, but that it could be taken abroad in yes. America. Because I always get this feeling that people feel like rural America, that's another part of the sure. world, you know, it's all another part yeah. of the country. But what happens here in rural America is important to America yeah. as a whole. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think, um, you know, rural America really has a big role in how That's the right. country, just the nation, is a shape that defined. It was defined. rural before there were cities. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. And you think about it, I mean, you go a day and you don't know, there's probably something that has become from rural America. Exactly. I mean, the easiest example is your food. Yeah, I was going to say, right. go pick some sweet corn on yeah. Main Street in, you know, in Brooklyn or <laughs> Philadelphia or yeah. you know, exactly. in Indianapolis even. Yeah, I mean, uh, we tend to focus on these big cities, but yeah. you drive a half hour in any one direction, you're going to hit you're rural life. You're in the back life. 40. You're exactly. in the rural exactly. 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 So there you go. If folks want to come to this or if they have any information that they'd like to get, how do they get a hold of this? Well, uh, you can go to ElkhartCountyHistory.org is our website. Uh, the museum is open Tuesday through Saturday normally, but during the run of this exhibit, we're also open on Sunday from one to five, and then Tuesday through Saturday, nine to five. And I'll tell you, <laughs> if any of the students out there or anybody that has a, a student in one of the schools, if they're involved with FFA or if they're involved with 4-H, this is an exhibit you'd really want to bring the kids to. As a matter of fact, if you're a teacher, you should maybe plan a field trip. That's a great right? idea. Right? Oh, That's a yeah, great absolutely. Field, trip. field yeah. trip, there you go. Yeah. And Get in touch with to, Patrick. And you don't <laughs> have to be, well, you don't have to be from Elkhart County to no. enjoy this. This <laughs> is about Indiana, it's about, you know, well, this is the nation. This is yeah. nationwide. Yeah, so yeah. there you go. So, Patrick, yeah. thank you so yeah. much. Oh, you're thank welcome. You so Thanks for coming. Yeah. Rick and I were just at the Elkhart County Historical Museum, and of course, we got hungry. Yeah, we and just so kind of moseyed down Main Street. We just kind of moseyed on down, and we came here to Evan's Sidewalk Cafe, and we are so excited to be here. The minute we walked in, it had that charm. I didn't um, walk. Well, no, I yeah. literally when we came out of the museum, it was like the cartoon smoke, and I just kind of floated. Yeah, just float. Well, yeah, I just kept going. I I'm had still to going. walk here, Crystal. Okay, <laughs> but you know, the minute you walk in here, it just has this charm, and really, it just feels like you know a lot of relationship and community happening here, and also great food. <laughs> yes. Um, everybody here pretty much knows each other. Mm -hmm. um, I could probably tell you at least half the customers' names that are in here right now. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, what, what, wait, can you, can you tell us your favorite dish? Uh, well, he pretty much eats anything on a special for <laughs> <laughs> So you've been working here for a while. I have. I've been here about 14 years. Wow, you started out and you said you were waiting tables? Uh, well, I started out cleaning the tables oh, and running the register. That's awesome. I wait tables every great once in a while. I'm not a big fan of it. And now you're the manager here. <laughs> yes, yeah, I manage, I cook primarily, but I'm the manager. That's today. awesome. No, I can tell you, I can say this. As soon as we walked in, no, she was right. It was like coming back home. And I'm salivating thinking about this. But some of the food that we're going to have today, it's all just, it's like comfort food, but there's some really good stuff going on. I hear you have a brisket. Yes, uh, we slice it ourselves here. It's smoked for a few hours. Um, it's served on a pretzel bun, and it comes with fries for $6.19. Nice. 
I mean, it's a very good price. Everything's made to order, nice and fresh. That's great. Now, this is family owned, right? Yes. How long have you guys been in the area? Um, well, it was bought 25 years ago in April. So we're just about to celebrate our 25th year here. Oh, congratulations. It's been known by other names before that. It's always been here, but just with us for 25 years. What are the, some of the things that people like to get besides, like, say, the brisket sandwich? I know that you, know, you guys do breakfast, but you also do yes. dinners. Uh, yes, we do. Uh, our lunch specials are from 11 until 2. Okay. And we have every Monday through Friday, we have our lunch specials. Our dinners come with mashed potatoes, gravy, and then uh, vegetables. Oh, yeah. oh, wow. And now I hear that you, you do breakfast as well. So what yes. time do you guys open? We open at 5 in the morning, oh, Monday wow. through Saturday. Sunday we open at 6, I believe. Okay. Yeah. It's a little later, yeah. 5 o'clock. Are you here at that time, Crystal? I get here at 6. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I come at 6. <laughs> well, my kids have to go to school. Well, there you go. Oh, there you go. Now, here you have killer omelets here. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. They're all three egg omelets. They come with half an order potatoes and toast. Okay, great. So what do you think we should get? Because we looked at the menu. Everything okay. sounds good. A little bit of everything. You know, we, a little bit of it. Well, that, that's a lot of food. I'm I don't know if we could do it, but what, what do you think we should get? What, what do you recommend? No matter what we bring to the table, I'm going to have it. I know. Yeah. <laughs> How's that? You know he loves brisket. Yes, so and I mean our brisket sandwiches are fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Our onion rings are beer battered, so those are delicious. I, mean, I love onion rings. And then we have a homemade petal sauce. That is a what? Petal, petal sauce. sauce, like a dip. Oh. Yes, to dip the onion rings in. We also have onion petals. So that's how we got the name petal nice. sauce. Nice. Okay, and it's homemade. Yes. Yeah. Can we get some of that? Yes, we can. <laughs> calm down, Rick, calm down. I feel like the kid has got to go potty. All right, so and I don't what, have to. Why don't we go find a food? And Crystal, you going to bring the food out here for us? Yeah, I sure can. All right. Hey, wait, who's making the food? That would be my stepdad. And, and what's his name? That's and my mom. It's Roger Evans, yes. Roger, we want to say thank you, Roger. Do you think Roger, we can say hi to him? Uh, wave to him? Yeah, you could, you could definitely wave to him. Hey, we want to say thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming. Can't yeah. wait to try the food. Kaboom. All right, so let's go right through this as quickly as we can. We had them cut the brisket sandwich in half because they offer two different sauces. So there's a horsey sauce that's on this one. With Swiss cheese. Yes. Right. And, mm -hmm. and then, of course, this is the barbecue sauce on there. So And the pretzel bun. Good, good Something idea. Yeah, yeah, it won't but, get soggy. And then take a look at these onion rings. And of course, their and, petal sauce yeah, right here. This is sauce. this is looking good. And they make these here, yeah. right? They're and made, I was, they're I'm not supposed to eat Kelsey said. Oh no, you're not supposed I, to. I can't wait. You, tell me, is it really good? Is it? How's the sauce? Oh, Ricky just went like that, mm -hmm. so that sauce has to be great. And mm. then this is one of the dinner specials. Country fried steak. Country fried steak. Mashed, mashed potatoes, potatoes and, and gravy with the corn. Look at that great. I mean, I, I'm going to try the mashed potatoes just real quick. Real quick. Mm. They're good, aren't they? <laughs> oh, wow. That's and delicious. This is the omelet with, actually, we had them try something different. We had them put the chicken sausage in. The turkey, or, I mean, sausage turkey sausage. Yeah. Instead of the pork yes. sausage. We have that. And it looks like cheddar cheese in there. I was, but yeah. they're, they're, they're famous for their omelets yeah, here. Yeah, and, and I saw here? him making these potatoes. Oh, I got to try the potatoes Oh, you got to try them. I yeah. know. That, I, I couldn't, I couldn't resist. I saw him making these, so there you go. Wow. Mm -hmm. Really good, I right? Yeah. Kelly grabbed the grabbed brisket the with the horsey, with the sauce, horsey on it. sauce. And I've got the barbecue sauce. So and I'm not waiting any longer. I know, Rick, this is your favorite food. Rick loves brisket. My I mean, favorite. if he could, he could probably oh, eat that three meals a day. So I'm going to try this here. You know, she told us that there were people that came in here from Texas that said it's the best brisket oh. sandwich they've ever had. This beats Bucky's down in Texas for those of you that have been down to Bucky so Beavers good. down in Texas. This is better than a Bucky sandwich. This is delicious. Wow. And I, thinking, I, would thought the, I thought the pretzel bun was going to be like real chewy. No, this is delicious. And Crystal mentioned that they smoke the brisket for about 17, 18 hours. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, when you take a bite of this sandwich, you can taste it. It is real. I mean, it is. I, I don't even want to share anymore. I'm more than one to take home. I don't want to share with Kelsey no, or with I'm, you. I'm taking another That's one. That's so home. good. Okay, we got to try the omelet too. Wow, Rick, you downed that. Oh, that's nice. I know. It was so good. And I'm trying the omelet. Turkey sausage and cheese. I can't believe I'm going into an omelet after a brisket sandwich. Mmm. I'll try it. Mm -hmm. Very good. Turkey sausage is really good. Three mm. eggs in this omelet. Yummy? Oh, that's yummy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Good stuff. Oh, we got to try the chicken. I got to do it. I got to do it. I got to do the you, chicken. You cut a little piece I of me while I finish my steak. brisket. You want some of the steak? Mm-hmm. What do you mean, do I want some? <laughs> I didn't know if you did. I do. I'm going to try and, it, and too. There's the gravy. You got right, the gravy on it. it. All right. The I'll gravy try a piece going. of this as well. That gravy I'm is so good, Rick. Try it. Wait till you. Let me see. Oh, man. Mm. Really tender. Now I know why it's the dinner special. Good stuff. Good so, stuff. Mm-hmm. Once again, Evan Sidewalk Cafe, Bristol. You don't want to miss out. You sure don't. And you definitely don't, you don't want to miss out on these uh, onion rings either. You put the whole thing in your mouth? Are you kidding me? Evan Sidewalk Cafe, great place to eat breakfast and lunch. Uh, Rick had a second sandwich, just so you know. He loved it so much. Maybe even a third to take home with him. But a great food. I'm glad I was along with him. Next, we're going to catch up with Krista Bailey, who is over at Eco Owl, an environmentally conscious print shop. Hi, I'm Krista Bailey with IU South Bend Center for a Sustainable Future, here with your monthly ish installment of Experiencing Sustainable Michiana. I am back at Lang Lab. This time, we're taking a closer look at how Eco Owl Press operates in an environmentally friendly, socially just, and economically sound manner. So, let's take a look. Hey, I found Cass. She's one of the co-owners here at Eco Owl Press. And I'm hoping that you can tell us all um, what makes a press a way that we can experience sustainability in Michiana. So looking at some of the environmental, social, and economic approaches that you guys take that maybe is a little bit different. Sure. So when it comes to the large format, it's a little bit more difficult than digital. Um, and you large format being like Banners yes, uh, like this oh, large 63-inch yes. roll, uh, the big banners, the retractable stands, anything um, outside of like a 12 by 18 like office printer. Um, okay. It's a little bit more difficult, quite a bit more difficult to find environmentally friendly options. Um, yeah, so that's kind of why I wanted to come because yeah. this stuff just yeah. looks like trash this, waiting to yes, happen a lot of times. But you guys are trying is. to get around that. We so are. how can we get around that? Yes, so offering alternative options. Unfortunately, we have to offer the bad stuff as well, but we really promote and try to use the, the better stuff as much as possible, hopefully to eventually get rid of like traditional vinyl banner. So this is what everyone's used to, which is plastic, vinyl, yeah. traditional banner that you go out, you put outside and it's waterproof, um, but it sits in the landfill forever, will never break down. Um, so some people get creative and you can use it like in the bed of your garden, but it still eventually ends up in the landfill. Right. Um, Trash waiting so, to happen. Exactly. But there's an alternative. There is, and this is a new material um, and it is made out of recycled PET plastic bottles. It's PET but plastic. But it feels like a felt. It does feel like felt. Um, so it has a huh. different feel, which is the only difference, really. If you look at the way it prints, prints the same, um, but it's also UV protected. It is mildew resistant, so it's waterproof. You can put grommets in it. You can sew the hem. You can do everything you can do with the traditional banner. And it'll and last hang a really it outside. long time. Yes. And, and fact, when we're done with it? It can be, so you cut off the grommets, you throw it in the recycle bin, number one. You just, okay. even at home. Cool. Um, it lasts just as long as traditional vinyl. Um, it, in fact, we've discussed it could even hold color better because of the UV protectant that regular vinyl doesn't oh, have automatically. Um, also, because it's slightly that felt material, a little bit of air will go through it, so I think it'll last longer that way as well. Um, so we're trying to promote this as much as possible. And yes, it is a little bit more expensive than traditional vinyl. It's the nature of the beast. But if you design your banners, and we promote this even if you want to go v with vinyl, where there's no dates on it and reuse it for as long as possible. The, Great. You know, on a business aspect, you know, I should try to sell you a new one every time, but no, if you just keep your <laughs> dates off of it or use a sticker with the dates or, or whatever, however you want to do it, you can use these for years. Um, but you guys do more than banners, so yes. you print stickers we do uh, and I think we've got some stickers coming off yep. the printer here and there's um, okay foam board yeah that looks like foam board it is not so it, tell me about this okay so this is actually this foam board which is okay horrible trash waiting yes. happen. Right. so Let's what we <laughs> promote and like to use is called falcon board and it falcon is board. actually more sturdy if you it's cardboard it is and it's wow. like a corrugated it's smooth and if you've ever messed with foam core, if you even touch it, it'll dent. 
This yeah. stuff is more structure. It'll hold that longer. The corners won't dent if you accidentally touch it. Um, and then we can use, we can mount your design directly to it, just like you would on foam core to put up on a display on an easel or to hang on the wall. And you can use it nice. over and over. And then this here is actually what's on the printer over there. Um, and instead of using adhesive vinyl, we use an adhesive paper material that's 100% recycled. It's wow. made out of coffee bag fibers. <laughs> it has water adhesive, and even the backer is a recyclable craft backer. So when you put your design on that and we mount it to this, this entire board is recyclable. Nice, um, not trash, just right. waiting to become a and new paper. Will last longer than foam core. And you can also recycle these big bears, which we love to have out for yep. our stuff, um, but are most of the time trash waiting to happen. Yes. But we've got a recyclable plastic, plastic film. And yep. of course the metal. Yep. Or could we just put a new banner in the frame? Yes. Really? We can. Oh. So this okay. is made out of recycled plastic bottles. So you're reusing cool. the plastic that's already there, and then you can continue to recycle it. This can be put in the recycle bin. And m traditionally, print shops won't want to replace the banner because you sell the stand, it takes a little bit more effort, but we really promote take care of your stand. Yeah. And then if you want to change out your design, you get a new branding or anything, we will take this out, put it in the recycle bin, and we'll replace it with a new graphic. It saves you money. You can use the stand until it's no longer usable before it gets thrown away. We do work with a lot of colleges and other departments that use a lot of these. And yeah. until they knew that you can replace the graphic, you have closet fulls of ones that you use for it's one just, event or yeah. just got outdated or you changed your logo and they just sit in a closet until they probably eventually get just thrown in a dumpster. So we so really promote it. So you guys are doing it. a lot in terms of to. being mindful with your environmental impact. Yeah. But I know, as you mentioned, you work with a lot of local I businesses do. and organizations. I do. Uh, so why is that your specialty? I mean, you could be printing a lot right. of stuff for anybody. We could. Um, well, we started local. We actually started out of our home. We live in South Bend. We raised our kids in South Bend. That monster printer over there, the large format one we talked about before, was in our basement. Um, my dad's self-employed. I was raised with that. But you've got to keep it in the community. The money stays where you live. When a rest local restaurant has us print their menus or stickers or their posters or anything like that, we then spend money by eating at that restaurant ourselves. And we promote it to our other customers when people nice. come from out of town. My family and friends hear about that new restaurant. And so you keep the money in the area. Um, if, if you buy on Vistaprint or any other online place, they're not coming to your event. They're not coming to your restaurant. That's not as far as we know. <laughs> right. That money just leaves your community yeah. and never comes back. And so we need to kind of help each other out. And I, I love that we print primarily local. Um, so a range of local folks yeah. investing in your business, getting a high quality product yeah. that they isn't going to be trash. Right. Um, and in turn, you're investing in them, which I exactly think is right. fabulous. Exactly right. Um, so we're in the main printing room, but I know you've got even more stuff we do. Uh, to show off. All so right. let's Let me take put a look at down. the other fun printing room. All right. So you guys print a lot of uh, like cards, flyers, yep. uh, bills, yep. invoices, um, menus, and even rack back cards. here, I'm <laughs> seeing lots of little green labels. Yes. So tell me about why you're doing this. Well, we also buy all our paper local. This is from South Bend, so oh, we also fantastic. avoid, you know, the exhaust from, you know, shipping things, and we can also sure. get things quickly, keeping the money in the community. Again, this is all local. Um, but yes, we spend the extra money um, on recycled options when we can. So even just our basic bond paper, which is usually for invoices, what you use in your home printer, we get 100% recycled. Um, and so then, even when you send me a bill yeah. in bond paper, yes. I can be happy about it. Exactly, because I mean, if you really okay. think about it, that type of paper is, I think in most people's minds, almost free. It's kind of throwaway. So if you make a mistake, yeah. you throw it. You make a mistake, you throw it. So if you're already using recycled, and we use a lot of invoices, um, and then of course, then we can recycle it. We recycle everything here. We have a recycle bin in every room, um, so it just helps. And then even our envelopes, um, the specific brands that we try to, of all the different sizes, not only does the company um, are they in, you know, environmentally friendly in their practices, 
There's also recycled content in those. And basic card stock for any business card or any you know, digital type item, even the glossy coated items, Futura, for example, this brand, that it's at least 20% recycled. And you know they have the FSC certification. So we try to right. as much as it's possible, and then up to 100% recycled card stock. Um, it is, you know, our, our profit margins are a lot less because we, we have to keep our prices pretty comparable. Um, not everyone can, uh, not everyone cares, unfortunately, about the eco-friendly part. Um, a lot of times budget is key. So mm -hmm. we try to keep our pricing to match around town, but we spend more on this type of product. It's just so important. So investing in a local business, but yeah. also investing in environmentally and socially responsible right. materials, mm -hmm. um, even in-house, for really right. walking the talk. Yeah. Uh, but exactly. you're also doing a lot, um, as you said, investing in the community, mm -hmm. and they're investing in you. So I'm wondering yeah. if we can learn a little bit more about a lot of these really cool flyers mm -hmm. and posters we're right. seeing over here. And what are we working on here, and for who? Um, all kinds of cool stuff, actually. Um, these are actually like thank you cards and correspondence pieces for Pete for America. Oh, very um, nice. This is actually the um, new brochure, or the um, South Bend Roller Girls. Um, they have their opening bout this weekend. Oh boy, season opener brochure. Yep. This is very for nice. that and has you know basically all the, the everybody on the team and so forth. We're co-sponsors, and we do a lot of that to um, a lot of these organizations have you know low to no print budget. So we'll help them out by doing in-kind sponsorships to, that way they can actually get the word out about their event and then we get our name out there as well. Um, so basically for the cost of, you know, the print, we get to put our logo in front of everybody that shows up to this. So or, Rich, as the co-owner of Eco Owl Press, um, this is kind of your marketing budget in a way, but also your way of investing in the local community. Yeah, absolutely. Brilliant approach. I love yeah, it. Um, I've, we've literally never spent any money on marketing ever. And it's all through in-kind sponsorships. I mean, being a print shop, we're sort of in a unique position that a lot of people could offer in-kind mm -hmm. stuff to be able to get their name in front of people at these events. So and yet, it's kind just of a, being here for a little while today, I've seen multiple different clients here. So yeah. somehow the word's getting out. Yeah, exactly. I, um, you know, when I first went out on my own, I'm like, I'm going to spend every Wednesday doing marketing. Still have not spent a single Wednesday <laughs> doing marketing, and then we're about to start year seven in April. So. Seven years, seven yeah. lucky years of yeah. taking a really balanced approach in terms of your investment in our local culture. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of cultural stuff happening here too and taking care of our environment. Thank you so much for that and operating a thriving business that's still going strong. So yeah. congratulations. It's fun too. And, uh, thanks for <laughs> showing me around. You're welcome. Thanks Cassidy. Thanks, Krista. Well, that's the it for this week's show. We can't wait for you to join us next week as we're going to find out about the For Love of Art Fair. It's a great two-day event that's happening right here in downtown South Bend. Until then, if you have things that you have experienced and think other people should too, let us know on Facebook. We'd be glad to hear from you. Until then, have a great week. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you.